So welcome everyone to our Friday contemplative practice. I'm Joanne and I'll be hosting the session today. Every Friday at noon, we offer a variety of contemplative practices led by various members of our community. It's an opportunity to pause and reflect a little more deeply, to be nourished in spirit and to join together in community. Today, Elizabeth River will lead us in a practice to reflect on the question, how can we cultivate more joy in our lives? Focusing on the eight pillars of joy from the Buddhist tradition. We will be invited to do some writing, so if you need to gather some writing materials, now would be a good time to do that. A bit about Elizabeth. Elizabeth is an interfaith minister hospice chaplain, and spiritual director. She has led many workshops and groups, including one on aging as a spiritual practice that met for five years. She particularly loves the intimacy of sharing in a group, inviting in the divine to help create the larger story. And a few reminders, the practice will last about 30 minutes, and then we'll open the floor for sharing or questions. And the practice will be recorded, but for privacy reasons, the sharing time will not be. Uh, you'll be able to unmute yourself during the sharing time. And now I'd like to hand it over to Elizabeth. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I just love looking at your faces. I was just going to say hi to Rogers, who came in, but he just went out. And hi, David. <laughs> just, I just love... Um, I, I love being in the in the middle of the tribe and seeing your faces. I have, I have gotten very fond of Zoom, even though I still long to see and hug people. Oh boy, Sandra! And so, um, I, <laughs> I I have little notes for myself. It says, "Say a few words about joy." Well, the first best thing to do about joy is have the inauguration we have on Tuesday. <laughs> have that day. And I have to say, I, if you just reflect for one minute right now on how you felt at any time during that day or all during that day, in fact, take a deep breath right now and just feel that. I had two friends I was talking to, and they said, they call me Lizzie, um, they're old friends, and, and they said, Lizzie, you are fizzing. And then, of course, the other one said, fizzy Lizzie. But at any rate, I was, I was fizzing all that day. I kept sending texts and receiving messages and telling people to do what they were already doing and I was already doing and watching and re-watching. And um, yeah, well, I guess I won't start us going on about Tuesday, but, or now, or the present moment. We will talk about the present moment, but I just have to say the load of joy that has rushed into my life and what I also realize is the load of dread and fear and just feeling pressed down upon has drained out. And I, I noticed on Tuesday noting these things that relief was a big part of my joy. But what I want to do is tell you, oh, first I'm going to read the, the eight pillars of joy. And then it'll be in our reading prompts, writing prompts. And... Um, but if you don't have it, you can just look it up, or I think we can probably, what do we do? You send it out, right? Or you did send it out, didn't you, Joanne? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway. When you're ready, we'll share the screen, and I have it on the screen. Okay, good. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to read them for, for a moment, and then I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, perspective. Humility. Humor, acceptance, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, and generosity. And here's the little story I want to tell you. I have to keep it short so we have plenty of time to meditate and write. I, uh, my then president-to-be, sent me an email and said, here are the things we're doing in our multi-day inauguration. And one of them was on Monday, <clears throat> Martin Luther King birth, Jr. 
official birthday celebration was a day of service. It was to be a day of service. And you could go to all these links and find service things you could do in your area or nationwide on Zoom or whatever. And I looked at all that, but I just wanted to do something <clears throat> that was just immediate. I don't know what I thought, but at any rate, I got up that day and I walk uptown from Point Reyes from where I live to uptown, which is two blocks. <laughs> and then I walk on Main Street and do all my errands every day. And there's a lot of trash. And this was a Monday. I forgot it was a holiday. So there were still bunches of tourists in town. But at any rate, um, especially on Mondays. So I thought this is the perfect day. And I, I put on my latex gloves and got a big old plastic bag. And I walked to the end of Main Street where it turns a corner to go out to the Inverness and, um, and then across the street and coming back. And I picked up litter. And it was about an hour and a quarter. And I <laughs> I had fun, and I felt a lot of joy. I mean, it was it was just incredible. My by the last when I got back to Wells Fargo Bank is the last thing on that side of the street. Just about passing from the Palace Mark to Wells Wells Fargo, my my back started saying, "Honey," and then I did three more or two more little pickups, and finally it said, "Oh, for God's sakes, will you stop this?" So it just worked out, you know, a little teeny bit over an hour. My body was done with that. And I, it was, it was so interesting because people didn't even notice me. There were just, there was a huge line at the bovine bakery and I had to weave. I stayed in the gutter side because most of the stuff was in the gutter, but I had to go through a couple of times. They were spaced, spaced out, spaced apart to pick up stuff that was over on the other side. So, you know, so I just went my way and nobody noticed me. Finally, when I got on the other side up by the building supply, two guys who were smoking by their trucks said, oh, that's a cool thing to do. So we talked a little bit and I said, I eyeballed their cigarettes and they said, yeah, yeah, we'll, we won't throw them on because I got a lot of cigarettes in my bag. Anyway, so I, I just loved it. And I came home filled with joy. I just, I had it during it even. Um, you know where the most trash is? Five feet from the, tra the, the, the bins. <laughs> The trash receptacles it was a riot. Anyway, I was full of joy. And you know what was absent was judgments and snotty thoughts about these these people. I didn't have it. I just didn't have that. It just was magically taken from me. And I sat here. Well, actually, I lay, I lay down on the floor on my back. And I lay there. And um, and what came into my mind is what, what was going on. And what I experienced was I later realized actually three of the eight pillars of joy. And the first one was humility. Humility, because I have walked past trash a lot, right here in my town, right here on the way home, because I my hands are, I don't want to get dirty, or whatever reason, I don't have anything to put it in. Whatever my reasons are, and I realized that if I don't pick up trash, I mean, if I weren't picking up this trash, someone else would be going to do it. And it probably with someone who is not as well off as I am. I mean, I just felt humility that I, that I did a tiny humility practice. And secondly, um, uh, the other thing was, um, oh my gosh, generosity. <laughs> I couldn't think of it for a minute. I felt, I felt uh, this, was a, this was a tiny bit of generosity. I didn't think of any of this beforehand. The third one that came to mind this week is a perspective, because that's the first pillar of joy. And one of the ways you you get out, I, I have to do consciously to get out of judgments and things that are not joy, is to step to another position and see this person or this problem or this situation from another place than the way I've always been seeing it, or was seeing it when I was full of uh, negative um, feelings. So anyway, that's all. That's just my little joy story for this week. But it made me realize sort of graphically how practicing these things, which, by the way, the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu uh, are teaching in this book, which I, I, um, I recommend highly that you own. It isn't a book you can sit down. You, probably a lot of you have read it because this is CCC after all. But what I found is I can't 
don't you just love their faces? I just have to say I love those faces. Um, you, you, it's, it's more of a guide. It's very good as a guide. And you can open to any place in it. There's a, a, after their first talk on the nature of joy. Oh yeah, I'm using up too much time. Anyway, they talk about the obstacles to joy and then they talk about the eight pillars. And then at the very end, I just wanted to say one thing. At the very end of the book, this is where you can make yourself a little workbook part. Uh, starting on page 107, um, they, they, they just um, sort of give you a lot of practices for each of these pillars and for overcoming obstacles. And they all come down to present moment stuff. It's just wonderful. So even if you just get the book and read from page 307, um, you're, you're in, um, I think that's the page. You're, you're, uh, you're way ahead of where you were before. Okay, so what I'm inviting us to do, and Joanne's going to put up the writing prompts. It has the eight pillars of joy. And then a couple of writing, few writing ideas, three writing ideas. And really, it's, or reflecting ideas. And um, use it however, however is best for you. And we'll have 20 minutes, right, Joanne? I'm going to set the timer. Okay. Okay, so take a deep breath. Breathe in the pain out there and breathe out the joy and the love. And just breathe. 